Today I'm gonna to show you how you can make meals ahead so that when you go on vacation, it can be a real vacation. Because I don't know about you, but as a parent, vacations can sometimes feel uh, not as relaxing as one would think. So if I can make the meals now, it means that on the vacation, I can actually relax. We've got a ski trip coming up to the mountains, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be bringing, and then I'm actually going to take you with me on the ski trip to show you how I cook those meals up and make it as easy for myself as possible. So we're gonna be making some snacks, breakfasts, and dinners so that all of the food is taken care of and I don't have to worry as much about the planning or the cooking. We're gonna be making some buffalo chicken quesadillas. We're also going to make some waffles. Those can be heated in the toaster or toaster oven. There's only a toaster there, so the toaster for us. And we're gonna be making some Amish cinnamon bread because the waffles use buttermilk. I don't want anything to go to waste, so for my leftover buttermilk, we're gonna turn it into that cinnamon bread. That will be great to slice up and be able to take out of the freezer for snacks. Now for the dinners, my neighbor Christy and I get together to make freezer meals. We do three months at a time and we recently did what we call a mega session. And this one was like mega, even more mega than usual. We did over 156 meals. I'll pop a video for that right there, but I'll also put it at the end of this video. So don't go check it out right yet. And in that video, we made the dinners because I knew I had this trip coming up. And so I specifically chose recipes that were going to be perfect. So I'll be showing you also how you can make those. We did chili, Dr. Pepper pulled pork, sausage tortellini skillet because it is so hearty and a full meal in one. And we also did a hamburger hoobie soup that'll be great for those skiers who are super hungry coming off the hill. So stick with me through this video. I'm gonna show it all to you. And at the end, you are going to be able to go on your next vacation with so much of the work already done ahead. I have this awesome waffle maker. It is so great because it makes four waffles at a time and they are exactly the right size to put into a toaster. That's what I like so much about it. When you have a large family, anything that'll make four at a time is your friend. But the key to making waffles to freeze ahead is that we're gonna lay them flat on a baking sheet. You can line it with parchment paper or just leave it as is and then you're gonna freeze them flat like that in a single layer before you transfer them into a freezer bag. Once they're fully frozen, you can transfer them into your bag. That way they won't stick together in the bag. They'll be really easy to pull out one at a time. For the buttermilk waffles, we're going to mix together flour, sugar, salt, and baking powder in our large bowl here. Then we're going to add four eggs that are lightly beaten, then some buttermilk, milk, and melted butter. We're gonna whisk that all together in our bowl, and then we are going to cook that in our awesome waffle maker and get those laid out on the baking sheets, get them into the freezer. Once they're fully frozen, we'll transfer them into our freezer bags and have amazing waffles for our trip. You know how earlier, we had done our waffles on a baking sheet in a single layer and frozen them. Well, same thing for our quesadillas. The quesadillas are going to be lunches for me because I don't actually eat beef. And so when my family is eating that hamburger soup, I will be enjoying my buffalo chicken quesadilla with some guacamole that I will make up fresh the day of but those quesadillas are already gonna be made and I can just fry them in a skillet or in the oven. We've cooked up 
some chicken, mixed it with some Frank's Red Hot Sauce and shredded it. Then we're going to take some flour tortillas, lay them out on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. And on half of each flour tortilla, we're gonna spread some shredded cheese. I used a habanero blend, but you can use a Tex-Mex, a jalapeno jack, Monterey jack, cheddar cheese, whatever cheese you prefer. And then we're going to sprinkle some chopped red pepper, diced onion, that chicken and I had one serrano pepper and a bunch of jalapenos so I've sliced up both and I'm gonna put some serrano in some and jalapeno in others so it'll be a little bit like playing hot pepper roulette you'll never know until you bite into the quesadilla how hot the pepper is going to be which uh, is kind of fun or not fun depending on your spice tolerance Anyway, and then once we've got that laid out on there, we're gonna fold the quesadilla over to cover that. And then we're gonna get this into the freezer. We're gonna freeze that flat so that they don't stick to each other. And then we're gonna get them into a large resealable freezer bag, take out the air and get them back in the freezer. I've never made this Amish cinnamon bread before. Like I was saying, I chose the recipe just because it called for buttermilk. I didn't want to waste any of my buttermilk that I had left over from the waffles. And since we're leaving in a week to go on this trip, I figured, gotta use it now. So I was reading about this and apparently it's also known as Amish friendship bread. You can do it with a starter or with this recipe here, we're not using a starter. We're just making it right now. The key to doing this for the freezer is we are gonna bake it today, but once it comes out of the oven, we're gonna allow it to cool and slice it before adding it to a freezer bag. It's really important that you allow it to cool first. If you put things into your freezer when they're still warm, there will be condensation in your bag that can lead to texture issues. It can also lead to freezer burn. So we're gonna make sure everything is nice and good and cooled. And the reason that I'm slicing it ahead, you don't have to, is because I want my family to be able to just go in the freezer, grab a slice out, reseal the bag, getting out as much air as they can because they've all been trained that air is the enemy and <laughs> They have to seal those bags up really well again before they freeze them. But I think this will be a really nice snack for them or even an on-the-go breakfast if they want to sleep a little later and miss the full breakfast and just grab one on the way out the door as they go out to the hill. For the Amish cinnamon bread, we're going to mix together some softened butter, sugar, and eggs in our bowl. Then we're going to add that buttermilk, some flour, and baking soda. Get that all mixed together really well. Then in a small bowl you're going to mix together some sugar and cinnamon. This recipe which we got from Lil Luna and I'll put the link in the description down below. It makes two loaves so we're going to put a quarter of the mixture into each one of two loaf pans that are greased. Then we're gonna add that cinnamon sugar mixture. Now it seems like an awful lot to add. You're gonna reserve a little bit for the top, but it seems like a lot. We'll see how this goes. Then you're going to put the rest of your dough on top of that. Sprinkle what's left of your cinnamon topping. And then we're gonna get these in the oven and we'll have these two loaves ready to go. I need to apologize. This whole filming on location business is not going very well so far. Last night we arrived and I brought this amazing dinner, cooked it up as soon as we got here because we had just done a video where we made twice baked potatoes. So I decided to last minute just change the menu plan a little bit, bring that as well as a spicy honey garlic chicken we had made in the mega session and a um, Cajun garlic butter snapper. So cooked all of those things up, the chicken on the in the skillet, the baked potatoes and snapper in the oven. We just had salad in a bag. It was such a good dinner. I have no photos and no video of that to show you. 
Second fail is that my son and his girlfriend came before us and so they took the chili with them and they started making it and I forgot to ask them to film that. So you can use your imagination. It went from the bag into a pot and now it is the leftovers of it. I'll show you. The leftovers of it are in this pot and everybody that comes in today from the hill from skiing is going to be able to have that for their lunch which is super easy and then this is the dr pepper pulled pork i had it thawing in there from last night and we are about to put it in the slow cooker because i'm going to remember to film that for you and i'll just show you the freezer so you see what else i brought and here we've got some christmas baking we've also got that cinnamon friendship bread that we made together before I arrived and here we go we've got some buffalo chicken dip and hot corn and crab dip from our holiday baking that I brought those waffles we made together and I did bring some mulligatawny soup because we did that in a video the day before I left and it's just so good so I brought an individual portion for me because then when they have the cheeseburger quesadillas, which I brought in addition to the buffalo chicken quesadillas, again, made those cheeseburger quesadillas in a video just yesterday, then because I don't eat beef, I can have my mulligatawny soup, which is vegetarian, which is awesome. We've got the tortellini sausage skillet right there, and this is the hamburger hooby soup. I guess I can't have that either, so I can have my buffalo chicken quesadillas one day, and mulligatawny soup another day. I guess I get my own private menu. Anyway, thank you for joining me on location. Now we're gonna go put the pork in the crock pot. Now that we've got the pork in the crock pot, I'm going to make myself a waffle, just pop it in the toaster and have it with syrup that I brought from home. I can get this day off to a great start. It snowed in the night, there's a lot of snow. It's so incredibly beautiful here. And here's a little secret. Tomorrow I'm going to attempt skiing for the first time in 30 years. I'm very nervous, I'm scared actually, but it's time that I gave it a try. So I'll kind of bring you on that adventure with me. I'll let you know how it goes anyway. Well, I survived skiing yesterday and only marginally sore if marginally sore means i can hardly walk <laughs> anyway it was actually really fun i am glad i did it glad i faced that fear and i will probably do it again maybe next month or maybe next year or maybe in five years but it won't be another 31 years before I ski again. Anyway, I thought I would take you on a little tour and just show you a little ways around where I'm at so you can see the beautiful British Columbia Canada mountains. Obviously today I'm extra glad to have the freezer meals and yesterday when I came in off the hill, oh my goodness, that food tasted so good. <laughs> it was like, I was ravenously hungry. Anyway, let's go on a tour. Thank you so much for joining me today as we made some ski trip freezer meals together. Hopefully this will help you the next time you are going on vacation to be able to relax and have most of the work done ahead of time. I'm gonna put the link right there to that mega session where we made a lot of these dinners and then you can see the craziness 
of Christy and I doing over 150 meals over two days. And I don't suggest you start there, but if you wanna watch us do it, go and check that out. Thanks for joining me today and happy cooking.